Creature Features! That bloke is my ever-present valet, Mr. Livingston, and this lass is my frequently troublesome housemate, Tangella. And I, of course, am your host and guide to the macabre, Vincent Van Dahl. I have both some good news and bad. First, the good. Tonight, we shall be screening a favourite film of our viewers, namely the immensely entertaining Nightmare in Blood. An astounding film created by the prior host of the previous version of this very programme, Mr. John Stanley. But the bad news is quite saddening. John was scheduled to join us as our guest for tonight's broadcast, but unfortunately the road into Bodega Bay is out, as so often occurs after inclement weather, and he'll be unable to visit us. So in lieu of a formal guest tonight, we have opted to undertake something entirely different. Tonight, our guest will be Tangela's favorite goat, Penny, or as she formally addresses her after she has wreaked havoc upon the flower beds, Miss Penelope Pottypants III. Miss Penny is a hybrid goat whose mother was from a Nubian mix and sired by a Nigerian dwarf. This unique variation of a typical goat has yielded an interesting personality type and renders her behavior atypical compared to a normal farm goat. As our guest goat, Penelope will enlighten us as to what it is truly like living in a large herd, her opinions on the varieties of grass and flowers that are in the pastures surrounding the mansion, and will help dispel some of the many myths about goats in general, particularly what a typical goat will and will not eat. So stay with us for another... Fabulous. Absolutely wonderful. Well, forget the bloody goat. Another time, perhaps. Stay with us for tonight's episode of Creature Features with... John Stanley. Did they fix the road? Four wheel drive, baby. Fabulous. Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Hi, I'm Linda Blair. And if you want to be scared, stay tuned on North Bay Television. Coming up. Welcome back to the show. We are surprised because John Stanley made it. You were like you were like a ninja on that road. Hav, remember four-wheel drive. I, you know, we have a Land Rover, 
and it's got four wheel drive and we have to use it sometime because if it rains, we can't go up the steep hill. So it, it was raining cats and dogs and a giant, a German shepherd hit me on the hood. Oh, well, you know, German shepherds, they, they have a name for them. It's like Schlaffenhund <laughs> in Germany. So maybe it's got something to do with that. A I don't schnauzer know. Hund is what we have. Schnauzer Hund, I love that. Yes. Schaefer Hund says, Paul Livingston, because he's German. Anyways, welcome to the show. We are with John Stanley, the prior, previous host of Creature Features. How have you been, sir? Well, aging day by day. I am as well, but you've been good. But you don't look a day older than the last time I was here. Well, it wasn't too long ago. When, when was the last time you were here? We had well, you weren't here. even here because uh, I was your substitute host. Has it really been that long? Yes, oh you were goodness. out of town. I'm not That's sure why. I was I in can't Paris. Why. Paris. I was in Gay Paris buying shoes. Uh, well, you know, I'm due for a trip back. So high maybe, heels? No, I think we need to have you back on as a host, as a fill-in host. I would I love. Mean, these I, people are probably sick of my face. I would love to do it. They would love to see Vincent, you. Vincent, I would love it. Well, all right, we're going to set this up. We're going to scratch it down on the calendar. But tonight, we're going to watch your movie again. Oh. You know, so the last time we showed it, Everyone wrote to us and said, we've never seen this film before. It's fabulous. Well, it did play in theaters for two years. Well, that's not long enough. <laughs> it has not. We, uh, we were the first ones to show it on television, right? And uh, we've shown it a couple yes. of times since then. But And it was a film that took a few years to get finished. Oh, yeah. Well, we're uh, going to get all the details on that. Don't you cut me off because oh, we got to go straight to the film. I'm so sorry. Yeah, all let's right. get to that opening all with right. Kerwin Matthews. We need to talk about him a little later. All right. We're going to talk about Cohen Matthews, but more importantly, we're going to talk about our hero, John Stanley. But first, let's get into Nightmare in Blood. Coming to this theater next week. You thrill to the bloodlust of Malachi and the Crimson Demon. You pale to the guillotines of France who are red with the blood of his enemies in the Zaroff Doom. Now, see Malachi, Hollywood's top box office horror star, in his latest fright classic, The Crypt Ran Red. Who lived too quickly and not long enough. 
Trapped by her own desires, she never saw the army of the undead which marched forth at Malachi's bidding. <laughs> Nagel as Cassandra, the seductress Malachi could not resist, though her lips meant death. A suicidal state through his own heart. A self-sacrificing vampire. Curtis Nolan as the police inspector, who knew his modern force was no match for the might of a thousand-year-old monster. Eduardo Nash as the doctor. He knew the answer to the mystery could only be found in the family crypt, but he dare not reveal it. I tell you, Professor, these killings are strange, almost beyond belief. Hogwash, Doctor. Surely you don't believe them old superstitions. Rubbish. Never has the screen showcased such terror, and never has Malachi crossed the threshold from death to life with such foreboding power, such deadly menace. Malachi rises from the grave again to chill and thrill you. Don't miss the Crypt Ran Red. Not now, not now. Okay, now. Well, here it is, our palace of horror. What do you think, Cindy? I mean, the original Frankenstein film must have played here. That's possible. Original Frankenstein Universal, 1931, starring Boris Karloff. Reminds me of the locale of your first horror novel. <laughs> well, there's plenty of atmosphere. This is like a set from one of those Christopher Lee British films. Yeah, there are ghosts all over the place. How do you know that? Elementary. Sherlock knows everything. Shh, shh, shh. Listen. What is that? Shh. Oh, come on, I'm serious. What is that? The ghost of the old usher. Now, there is somebody here. This is Flannery, the custodian. Yeah, since 28, when they first opened the place. What are you doing around here? I got cleaning to do. Expect a bunch of nuts renting the place for a ah, crazy convention. That's us. We're the convention committee. Oh, you're the ones putting on the horror con. Yeah, we're the nuts. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hold a screwball convention, go right ahead. Just as long as I get no complaints about my coffee in Danish. <laughs> it's not like the old days. That's when they made real scary movies. Lon Chaney. And the fact of the opera. <laughs> John Barrymore, <laughs> Dr. Jekyll, and Mr. Hyde. <laughs> hey, how'd you like the ghost? Oh, I think I'm in love. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> it's terrific. Just imagine, in about two hours, Malachi's coffin on that stage. You really ready for him, Professor? Pretty weird how he lives his role off screen. 
Oh, the fans eat that up. I mean, don't forget a box office gross of 10 million. All Class A vampire flicks. Yeah, Cindy's right, Scotty. Malachi. One of the screen greats. It's like having Lugosi, Karloff, Christopher Lee, Vincent Price. And he's right up there with the very best of them. Guests of the show stay at the Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa in Santa Rosa. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. Bosswick, you're watching North Bay TV. Buy my underwear. Awesome. Huh? Hello, I'm Vincent, this is Tangella, and we just want to remind you we've got a wonderful website. It's at creaturefeatures.tv, and at that location we've got things like previous episodes, our merchandise, we've got photographs of the entire gang, including Tangella and her hideous friend. So be sure to come see our site. You'll love it. Welcome back. You know, John, I love yes. that opening sequence with the whole sword Yes, fight that was thing. Kerwin Matthews, who was a swashbuckling hero in several uh, films way, way back when uh, Ray Harryhausen was doing the special effects. Right. The Golden Voyage of Sinbad. He was not Sinbad, though. He was like one of the other people, or was he Sinbad? No, he was Sinbad. He yeah. was Sinbad. He, he played Sinbad in this, you got Sinbad. In this film. Yes. Oh, no shit. And we found, as we were making the movie, we found out that he was working in an antique shop in San, San Francisco. So my uh, partner, Ken Davis, and I went to pay him a visit one afternoon. We told him that we uh, were going to do this sequence uh, the, that was a scene from another movie, or it appeared to be. And uh, oh, he says, that sounds wonderful, especially since he would be a uh, dueling and uh, he would be the role of the hero. And so that's what he, he wanted. wanted to play that. That's what he yes. mostly wanted. Yes, well, he what did. in God's name was he doing working in an antique store? Well, he'd more or less given up making movies. This was around 1975. And in fact, he did very few movies once he was in San Francisco. Uh, he did, uh, he was involved in the opera. Uh, he liked to raise money to help the arts of San Francisco. In fact, he died here at the age of 89 in 2008. Wow. Is he from San Francisco? No, no, he just, just like wanted to live here. Well, we all, I, I've, I've lived in San Francisco for a moment, but only a quick one. I lived it's there. so expensive to live there now. Well, I, I lived there back in the 60s when it wasn't so bad. I could rent a room for a month for $25. Right, but for that $25, what did you have? The Zodiac Killer in Vietnam riots. That's oh, you mean during the 60s? Right. Oh, oh. Well, uh, yeah, uh, I was going to college, so I wasn't seeing as many movies or t TV shows 
as I normally did at that time. Right, right. But uh, I had a wonderful time at San Francisco State. No, you know, it's a beautiful city. And, you know, I've I've talked to Tom about this Playland place. You probably spent some time. Playland at the beach. Playland at the beach. You've been? Yes. Oh, yes. When I first arrived in San Francisco in 1959, it was one of the places I would often go over and visit and uh, plan to have dinner there at one of the... Uh, uh, restaurants in the front. That now, was it the there Ocean when you Avenue. made your film? We started the film in 73. No, I believe it was torn down by was them gone. around that time. No, that would have been yeah. a nice sequence for your film, a yes. Playland sequence. Yeah, All but right. uh, it was gone by then. Well, why don't we see some more of your film, and we're going to talk some more about the making of Nightmare in Blood, because we've got John Stanley. So you guys stay with us, because the film's going to start right about now. George Wilson. That's right. How do you do? Hi. Glad you made it. Good to be here. Is this your committee? Yes. Uh, Cindy O'Flaherty, uh, George oh, Wilson. George is host of Fright Flicks. I'm going to be on the show tonight. Ah. Oh, and this is Barbara Castle. She's uh, helping me with the fashion coordination. How do you do, Barbara? And uh, uh, Philip Scott. Scotty. Scotty's handling the uh, writer's program and the film. This is uh, Harry Marsden, my cameraman. He'll be moving around. Just ignore him. All right. You know, Malachi's refused to be on my show tonight. Uh, well, it's rumored Brian? that he hates your show. And you in particular. Well, I don't Brian care. That's why I brought Harry. I'm determined to get an interview with him tonight, no matter what. Good luck. Well, good luck to you, Professor. I got a little surprise for you. We're having another guest on the show, Dr. Carl Unworth. Oh, no. No. <laughs> I hope to keep it a friendly discussion. Oh, well, now, this is something I'd really like to see. <laughs> well, here's another added thing. He's organized the women's groups in town, and they're going to have a demonstration outside the theater tonight. Tickets are hard at work, Billy. They're doing some of the promotion for us. Malik, I would love to hear you think that way, Billy Boy. Those must be the two PR men, Harris and... Oh. Mr. Uh, Harris. <clears throat> Mr. Harris, how are you? How are you? And Mr... Just uh, call me Bibi. Uh, uh, Bibi, you must be Professor Seaver. Yes, I am. Nice to meet you, Professor. Nice yeah. to meet you. This little darling? Uh, this is uh, one of uh, my associates on the committee, Cindy O'Flaherty, uh, uh, Bibi. Cindy O'Flaherty. How do you do? Mr. Harris. Uh, publicity purposes. Well, we're still getting things together. We should be ready in a day or so. Now then, before Malachi arrives, there are a few strict rules he insists upon. In the tradition of the screen greats, he feels he must live the role of the vampire at all times. He'll have it no other way. Well, all of us understand the conditions of the contract and appreciate his attempt at reasons. Well, that's a way of it, Professor. Now, you take this cross here around Cindy's neck. It'll have to come off.
Malachi. I'm Winslow Seabrook. Ah, Professor. I've read your novels and only regret that you have yet to indulge in the vampire genre. Well, that's something I've regretted myself. Perhaps after this meeting... As an actor playing a role, I assure you I have my own very distinct ideas of the vampire's place in contemporary society. I'd like to hear those ideas. Certainly. Later, perhaps, during the convention. Ben Harris is a creepy little guy. That's mm -hmm. PR men for you. Hatchet men working for Malachi out of Hollywood. I've got to get back to the spa. We close at 10. Come on over, Cindy, when you get finished, and we'll go for a midnight swim. By midnight, I'm going to need that swim. I'm George Wilson, you know, Fright Flicks host. I've been informed of your program. <laughs> and of your tongue-in-cheek commentary directed at the genre of horror films. Well, it seems to be what the fans like. Indeed. That's a bogey for you, George. Let us set the stage, Professor. Okay, fans, I guess I'm the villain now. Everybody will have to leave. Uh, there'll be time for more autographs later, okay? Everybody out now, please. Right this way. I think we've complied with everything that your PR man, Mr. Harris, and Mr. Oop. Be very careful coming up these stairs. They're really dangerous. This morning, one of our crew fell on there. We've slanted all the publicity so that the buffs will think that you're actually in the coffin asleep on the stage during the daylight hours of the convention. I intend to maintain a believability in the supernatural as best I can. Such a believability should be the prime motivation behind all horror films. An actor cannot afford to disappoint his fans. <laughs> and now, Professor, if you will excuse me, I have several public relations angles to discuss with Mr. Harris. Harris? Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome to the Flamingo Hotel in Northern California's beautiful Sonoma County wine country. The hotel was built in 1957 to mirror the image of the original Vegas Flamingo design. It's always been the area's favorite resort because of its amenities and its strong connection to the glamour of Hollywood and Las Vegas. The Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa offers 170 guest rooms. It includes 14 suites and executive king accommodations. From all of us at the Flamingo Hotel, we thank you. I look forward to seeing you soon. A single ember from a wildfire can travel over a mile. You can't control where it will land, only what happens before it does.
Visit fireadapted.org to learn how to protect your community from wildfires. You are watching North Bay TV, so stay tuned. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the show. John had to step away to speak to his publisher, right? Evidently, sir. Evidently. So we're going to take this opportunity to do our letters from you, our wonderful viewers. But first, Tangella, what are you doing? She That's not a, a real one, thank mad goodness. Oh. Yeah. You know, this looks like a Disney character. She normally doesn't do Disney characters. No. Let's do letters. All right, first letter is from, oh my goodness. This is, a, I, I can't read all this. I know, sir. I'm gonna read very fast. All right, this is from Richard Siegel in Paris, France. Paris, I love Paris. I'm gonna be going there soon. Maybe I'll go visit Richard. Dear Vincent, Mr. Livingston and Tangella, I just watched the show from last night with the film, The Creature from the Haunted Sea. Oh, it's been a while since we've shown this one. It has been a bit. What are you hiding my mail? No, it takes a while to get here. All right. The film was awful, yes, but the presentations were very entertaining and I enjoyed the whole experience. Since I live in Paris, I guess you could say that you now have a fan from either further away. And I will be happy to watch for your shows on YouTube and become as much as possible a regular. It didn't hurt, of course, that you interviewed my brother, Mark. Oh, I thought I recognized that name. Mark Siegel, remember him? He was oh, wonderful. indeed. He was wonderful. He was like a filmmaker guy who's done all kinds of like artistic things for film. Still, as a huge horror film fan from way back, discovering your show was a lot of fun. All my best and in hopes of seeing you online again soon. Well, hopefully you're watching us now, Mr. Richard Siegel. Thank you for writing. Next up, we've got a letter Not from so far away. Not so far away. Jason, who now lives in San Jose. That's how he wrote it. Who now lives in San Jose. All right. Dear Vincent Livingston Tangella. Oh, no. He goes, Dear Vincent Livingston and the lovely Tangella. Uh -huh. You know, you should see her in the morning. She's spooky sometimes. Maybe not. I grew up in Milpitas, California, and remember watching Bob Wilkins on Creature Features every Saturday night on Channel 2. I think it would be a tremendous honor to Bob in my hometown if you showed a film called The Milpitas Monster. Can we make this happen? You're Don Tootin, we can make it happen, Jason. In fact, we know the filmmaker well, and he's due to come back, right, Mr. We Robert? We have shown this so, film, sir. You know, in fact, this... It was a gift from Robert. It's a garbage can from that film. It's got hair on it, but it's 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 one of the garbage cans from Milpitas Monster. So we have to call Robert tomorrow for Jason because he's from Milpitas, but now he's in San Jose. Thanks for writing, Jason. Next up, we've got a letter from Mr. John Marks, and he says, Dear Creature Features, I just want to let you know that I love Creature Features, and I dig Vincent Van Dahl and Mr. Livingston, and Tangella. You know how it's always like she's a footnote later? She, they always like us, and then they say, oh, and Tangella too, right? You know, everyone loves Tangella. You guys rock. Is there a Creature Features Twitter account? Twitter, Twitter account? Is that like a credit card company Not quite or yet. What are you doing? She's, oh, you guys stick a candle in its, no? All Let's right. not and say we did. Livingston, one of God's name is a Twitter account. Is that like? I'll explain it to you later, sir. But it's not like PG&E or anything, is it? No. All right. Well, we're going to get one. Oh, you know, I know what it is. It's like Instagram, right? 
Yes. We've got an Instagram now. It's Creature Features 3. Yes. Because Bob was one, and John Stanley was two, and we're three, right? We're the third. Your logic is impeccable, sir. It is. It is. All right. If so, let me know during the future broadcast of the show. No, we're telling you now. No future broadcast. Keep up the awesome work. Thank you, John. All right. Is that it? No, we've got more. I believe we have one more. One more. It's a four-letter night. It's like a four-letter word, but different. <sighs> All right. Uh, this is from Bob in Vallejo, California, and he says, Dear Vincent, Tangella, and Livingston. Oh, you're the last one. You're the footnote on this letter. My turn, I guess. I love your show, and I watch regularly. I'm so glad you guys are continuing in the footsteps of the great Bob Wilkins and the footsteps of the great John Stanley. There's nobody like him, but Vincent, you have a great presence, and I must say your jokes are pretty relevant, and your choice of guests has been great thank you sir and keep creeping he says creep in he creep did. in bob you know i love you in your note but you forgot to put a g on creeping it's america oh it's an american thing oh my apologies it drops the g's on the end all right is that it that would We're be done it. no more we have to do a five letter night one night it's right? difficult for you, isn't it, sir? Why not? It is. No, I like doing letters. It's my favorite. All right. If you'd like to send us an email, you can just pop it into your computer and send it to this address here. Or if you'd like to use conventional means, you'll need a stamp and an envelope, and you send it to this address here. Either one will come to us, and we love getting letters from you. Let's get back to Nightmare and Blood. And when we come back, we'll have John Stanley with us again. Stay with us. Where's Malachi? He's, uh, gone. Hmm. Well, he must have left already. Oh, maybe he's just taking a little nap. <laughs> no. I guess everyone's gone. Well, let's go. Well, where to? Gary Arlington's comic book store. I told Scotty we'd meet him there. We're going to go over the uh, comic book displays for the lobby. Did you notice how dismal everything looks when there's no one here? Hello? You're lonely, aren't you? You can almost feel it generating its own personality. Its own emptiness. Come on, let's get out of here. We can lock up on the way out. So this is home for the next week, hmm? This is it. And does it suit you? A bad. Oh, well, for such short notice. <laughs> it's another surgeon square. <laughs> you know, practice is keeping you boys very proficient. <laughs> the Gestapo would call this subterranean chamber a safe house. One episode out of many. <laughs> it's more years than I care to count. Well, I stopped counting long ago. Good. What have you boys planned for the evening? Oh, a little nocturnal sojourn, perhaps? Sticking out our necks, you mean. Oh, come off it, Harris. You know you enjoy your little excursions into the night. Fair exchange, I call it. You do for us, we do for you. I still wish we'd stayed in Beverly Hills. You know my career is everything. How could I turn down this opportunity? Not a mark in the history of the cinema. The first horror con with Malachi, the prime attraction. Not even Lugosi had a chance like this. It is almost a work of art. It is a work of art, Cindy. Reposing in four-color limbo since the year of darkness, 1954, no. when censorship caused these works to wither and die. Never in your eyes. Nor in the eyes of those who appreciate the greatest medium of all time, the comic book. Ah, vintage Wally Wood, 1951. Yeah, right. 
As you can see, the sands of time have taken away nothing. They've given only freshness. That gives me a chill, you know. Uh, it's a satisfying chill. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we could use a few new candidates on the board. Maybe we could fill it with some of those nice folks we met in the lobby. ...removed from the body and most of the blood drained. Ironically, the theater was presenting a double bill of horror films at the time. Look, uh, we're counting on you to give us a hand decorating the theater over the weekend. I stand by eagerly. I feel it is an honor to partake in the first of horror cons. Well, I hope it's not the last. You've really got this place together, Gary. A shrine for comics of all times past and of all times to come. What you see about you has come to symbolize my life's work. I've got to get to the TV studio. Fright Flicks seems to be where it's at these days. Mm. Can you handle it? Who, Unwer? Mm -hmm. He's a born loser. He does have a way of persuading people. The persuasion of the truth is stronger. Men will turn to ashes. Only comics will prevail. Well, I'll <clears throat> see you at the theater tomorrow, OK? Night, Gary. Good night. Cindy, I'll walk you to the Oh, thanks. Nice, thank you. Been meaning to reread Sherlock Holmes in the sign of the four. Of mysteries I know little. Of comics I know all. The truth of the universe can be found here. The mythos of mankind. One need only look among the old, the new, the horrifying, the funny. Peace, war, love, hate, underground, above ground, death. All is here within these walls. We'll be ready to go in just a minute, Dr. Unworth. Uh, this is my pet. So how did you get Malachi to come down for this horror con of yours? He didn't want to come to the show. Well, we were lucky. We contacted his manager in L.A. Uh -huh. And um, he was free, fit into his schedule. Yeah. Plus, we're showing four of his films, too. And now, stay tuned for the incomparable George Wilson, coming up next on this channel with another Fright Flick. This is what we're about to go on. Good evening, fans. Welcome to Fright Flicks, the show for Saturday Night Losers without a date, the show for people with nothing better to do. I've been reading a lot of letters from you viewers, and you're all asking me the same thing. Why do you even bother, they ask me, to show two rotten films every week? Well, tonight we sort of got an answer for that. Instead of two rotten films, we're only going to show one rotten film, okay? <laughs> And instead of our first feature, we offer two distinguished guests, each with a different point of view about horror films. On my left, a man who actually enjoys the things, the noted author, Professor Winslow Seabrook. And on my extreme right, Dr. Carl Unworth, a psychologist who has devoted the last 10 years of his career to a crusade against horror films because he feels they contribute to the deterioration of our youth. In fact, this very program is featured as a contributing cause in Dr. Unworth's latest book on the subject, Rape of the Young Mind. This book treats horror films in some depth. And indeed, Doctor, you have an entire chapter on the vampire film actor Malachi. How come? The malignancy known as Malachi is indeed the core of my book, Mr. Wilson. His exploitation grade Z vampire films have sickened and poisoned the minds of young Americans for too long now. Why, it's an insult to the intelligence of any God-fearing Christian who knows werewolves and vampires do not exist. Here you see a man who in one breath claims to be the epitome of the cinema vampire, who has the audacity to call his work Film art, and in the next breath, poses for this kind of trash. What an excellent time for me to mention the first annual HorrorCon, which will be held right here in San Francisco next week, 
with Professor Seabrook in charge. I'm uniting the mothers of San Francisco so they won't permit their children to attend this disgusting event. Once again, we Petitions are faced are with now a being... self-appointed censor who wants to tell us what we should or should not have. I've often wondered, Doctor, what's your personal reaction to a really good pornographic film? I've examined many such films. I'm sure you have, Doctor. Oddly enough, it's time for our first commercial break. Well, you've done a fine job taking pictures of all the nice folks for the board. Yeah, it's just all part of the business of life. What are you two standing there for? Get busy, both of you. Is it your throw or mine? I believe it's your throw. Get the shakes, have you? Can you stand the shakes, Billy Boy? You've got a fine attitude, Billy. Malachi appears irritated. I have the feeling someone's going to get it tonight. Well, come on now, get on with your throat. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. Welcome back to Creature Features. You know, I love that scene where we see that original set. I mean, you've got the best footage you, ever made. You are set. seeing the original Bob Wilkins set 
from the year 1973. He'd only been on the air a couple of years, so That's that was the original set. It is archived for posterity. So when you did the switch, right, when you took over for Bob, I mean, it must have been difficult. Well, uh, there were several people who would come up to, to me and say, how do you plan to fill Bob's boots? Those are big <laughs> shoes to fill. They sure were. And yours were big and shoes so to fill. So I would always say, well, nobody can fill Bob's boots. I can only go forward and try to be me. Right. And superimpose myself upon the concept of creature features. So for the first couple of months after I had been accepted, as his replacement, I would go to the studio on Friday, his shooting day. I would follow Bob everywhere he went. I would listen carefully. I made notes. Uh, I tried to, to see if I could learn the basics of it. And then over the top of that, I would try to inject what was inside of me that was special. My love for comic books, my love for movies. Uh, I was able to produce short little films we called mini, mini movies. Right. I'd get out of the studio, I'd go to a, a location somewhere, shoot a short little thing that would have a funny ending to it or a satirical ending. I've seen them, they're wonderful, and they added a lot of flair to yes, it. Yes, uh, those mini I, movies really I suppose helped. we kind of do them, not as, as intricate as yours, but sometimes we'll take a camera out with Tangella and a goat or mm -hmm. something like that. So it adds some, that's a bit of flavor. Well, you know, I never had the benefit of that because you were, you were busy. I mean, you came and did our first show, which yes. was wonderful. And it was I, great. I learned a lot from you, but it was not like I could follow you around your set. No, no, I don't have a set done. anymore. It's been a long time. It's too much of a gap. But, you yeah. know, he's an excellent tutor, right, when it comes to horror hosting. I, you know, I think you should do another show. Well, uh, I think I should take I've a long vacation and you should sit in this chair. Uh, I've been approached about that, but you know, anytime you you're get. leaving town, if the police are looking for you, let me know he's, and I'll be glad to come down he's here. He's like a horror house grandfather. He doesn't want the children first full time, but he will take them on a weekend sometimes, <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of grandfathers, let's grandfather in the rest of this film. We're going to the next segment and we're going to have fun, right? You bet. All right, off we go. Back to Nightmare in Blood. Stay with us. And so don't forget, next week at this same time, the famed vampire actor Malachi in his first feature film, Fangs Over London. Unfortunately, Malachi himself won't be here, even though he's in town, but... I can understand that. No one likes to review the mistakes of his youth. Uh, Professor Seabrook, you were telling us something about the effect of horror films. Yes, well, these films are a superb outlet for our uh, frustrations. Mm -hmm. Instead of persuading us to commit crimes, as my colleague purports, horror films may help to prevent that very thing. How about that, fans? We show one horror film and keep thousands of potential criminals off the streets. Because they're all sitting at home watching our show. Oh, it's a, a, a special treat, fans. In person, Malachi. I wasn't informed of this. If you think I'm going to sit, sit down, me. you know nothing of horror, nor of the enjoyment my films bring to the young throughout the world. Like so many others, you want to suppress the creative imagination. You look for the illness in others when that same illness permeates your very soul. And now... And now it's time for a message. The only message will be directed at you with your shoddy attempts to make a mockery of the entire horror genre. You call it tongue-in-cheek when it is a slap in the face of every decent horror film actor tainted our images beyond repair. To my legions of fans, I must apologize, but I felt it was absolutely necessary to appear here tonight. <laughs> Thank 
Are you still here? Hey, Barb, you in the pool? Hey, Barbara, I decided to take you up on that midnight. Seabrook? Yes. Lieutenant Driscoll, homicide. Yes, Lieutenant. They called and said, uh, Barbara makes the third dissected corpse we found in San Francisco in the last 48 hours. I understand she and Scotty were planning to be married. Yes. She was a very talented girl, Lieutenant. Any enemies? Someone was an enemy last night. Well, if you pick up anything, let us know. 1970, Francisco Boulevard. And the phone number. Tell me something, Professor. Okay. Can you think of anything that, uh, What's it feel like when the horror in these posters the starts to happen to you? Okay, well, if I'm okay. Why don't you take the rest of the day off? Huh? Work is best for me right now. I'll see you later. Can I talk to you for a minute, Professor? Sure, Scott. I saw her, Professor. Barbara. It all things so senseless. That's just the point, Professor. It wasn't senseless. This morning, someone carved up Harry Marsden. George Wilson's cameraman. Blood was drained. Vital organs been moved. Identical to Barbara's. It's beginning to sound diabolical. Here's something else. Out of the three murders, two of the victims were in this very lodge when Malachi arrived last night. I've been robbed. That man's Harry is a PR man. He gave me this. Look at it. No damn good. It's worthless. Now, you people are responsible around here, and I'm holding you personally responsible. I knew he was going to cheat me. I could see it in his eyes. Now, I am holding you personally responsible. Okay, relax, relax. Yeah, relax. Here. Good enough. <laughs> in the old days, they made good pitches. Oh, the cabinet of Dr. Caligari was real fingers. <laughs> oh. Look at this, Professor. It's pretty old. Looks like a dime. No, it's not a dime. It's, a... it's British. 1824. Yeah, it's a sixpence. Hey, Vincent, this is Michelle and Gary from Oakland, California. And we are digging this show about werewolves. And we love you and Mr. Livingston and Tangella and all the wonderful guests you have. It's a bitchin' show. Thanks.
This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. Gather your friends together around the campfire and listen to scary stories told by Spooky Boo. Horror stories, campfire stories, and scary stories at scarystorytime.com. Some moms travel miles for a present, but Cash's mom traveled the country for her child's life. To St. Jude. Yep. Cash was diagnosed in California with a rare cancer. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital tailored a special treatment just for him. Our research helps save kids everywhere. Want to do lunch? Well, someone is feeling a lot better. Go to stjude.org or shop wherever you see the St. Jude logo. Hey, we're Quiet Riot here at the House of Rock in Santa Rosa, and you're watching North Bay TV, so stay tuned. Guests of the show stay at the Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa in Santa Rosa. Welcome back. We are still watching Nightmare in Blood with Mr. John Stanley, former host of Creature Features. You know, it's always such an honor to have this man on the show. It's such a joy to see my film the again, because I haven't seen it in years. Well, no, the joy is mine for having you on the show and showing your film, but yeah, well, we've, I've, I've got you here in person. I appreciate it I so much, I can watch your Vincent. movie anytime, but it's not often I get the John Stanley. Don't forget to the take show. the no-dose tablet before you watch it. That's right. No, this is a wonderful <laughs> film. It's, it's action-packed. All right, so we saw a scene earlier with a comic book store, and you were telling me during the break that you have a very long love of comics. From Tell the, us everything. From the time I was nine years old, I discovered the EC Comics. Famous the, brand. The, the Tales from the Crypt, The Vault oh, of Horror. Oh, yes. And uh, there were also war comics and crime comics, but they were different from the other comics that have preceded them. Right. They were more realistic. They even sometimes dealt with racism oh. within the pages of a comic book. That was very rare. A touchy subject back at then, the I time. Imagine. And so uh, I also had a love for pulp magazines, and so I developed a love for some of the science fiction writers. Right of the period, like Ray Bradbury and so on, and I was able later to bring them into the show, onto Creature Features. Now, did this, all this inspire you to become a writer? Yes, it certainly did, did, yes. But you never wrote comic books? No, I, I did not. I did write a lot of fantasy and science fiction in my early days, some crime noir, as we call it. You should do a comic book, John. Well, uh, I never had any artistic talent. No, I, no, I you, took you an write the story in the dialogue, and you find a well, I suppose part. one could do that. Right. My life ended up at the San Francisco Chronicle as an entertainment writer, right. and I was interviewing the people I loved to go to a movie to see right. or a television series, and that was for three decades. 30 years yes. writing at, at the Chronicle? At the Chronicle, oh, yes. At the Chronic How are they doing? The San Francisco Chronicle? Yes. Well, I still uh, read it every week. I work the, the crossword puzzle right. on Friday and Saturday because they're they are the hardest. Um, th they seem to still be doing quite well. Uh, it's a little. It leans a little to the left sometimes. It right. gets a little uh, lack of objectivity, but mm. otherwise, I think it's still a very good newspaper. Yeah, but I mean, in the sense of you know the fact that newspapers we just don't see them anymore. I mean, I remember know, the time when they vanished be a, a bus stop and there'd be like 30 newspaper racks. I know there used machines. to be five daily newspapers in right. in San Francisco back in the 50s. 
my goodness. Yes. And now it's just really that now way. Now you have the, the Chronicle and a couple of other weekly, That's it. San Francisco weekly. All right, well, we're getting the signal. We've got to get back to the movie. But when we come back, we're going to talk some more with Mr. John Stanley, right? Absolutely. All right, off we go. Back to the film. Yes, a British term used to describe private medical colleges clustered around universities, usually specializing in anatomical research. Why? Gary, is your store still open? Normally, the store remains open seven days a week, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., closed on holidays. However, due to the singular urgency of the preparation of the Horicon, I've been unable to... I need in, like right now. The desire I'm most pleased to accommodate. Let's go. Scotty, what the hell is going on? You'll never believe it, Professor. Let's go, Gary. How is the research progressing? It's beginning to fall into place, Gary. Listen to this. Number 10 Surgeon Square, the home of Dr. Robert Knox, anatomist, in Edinburgh at the old college on the South Bridge. Alack, factual murder is not my forte. Crime does not pay. The famed comic book was my most deep involvement. Factual crime is my forte. I should have put all this together sooner. William Burke. Bill Burke. Phoebe. Phoebe. Hare. Harris. The original body snatchers. Neither living nor dead. Yet for the vampire, blood gives neither life nor death. But it does sustain life. And a career. <laughs> You know, there is something to be said for the art of the horror film. You can talk about art, but few horror film actors have ever attained it. Mm, it is the age-old problem, a lack of good parts. Lugosi, for example, would take anything just to keep working. Even the best, Vincent Price, Cheney Jr., Karloff, Christopher Lee, Lionel Atwell have always worked in pot boilers. I have always demanded literate scripts. In fact, Professor, I was so impressed with your novel, Triple Trauma, that I've given some thought to you as my writer. Talk to my agent. <laughs> Good. We might consider the, the ecological problems of the contemporary vampire. Consider how air pollution and chemical poisons have taken their effects on the human bloodstream. Excellent. And in turn, think of the effect this taint would have on the blood drinking vampire something else we might consider who is the true monster vampire or man well it is the vampire who has come to symbolize evil it is the human race that should have that honor i never thought of that before yeah, but that is the way a modern vampire could think and one more thing to think about a new kind of love interest love interest good Love interest does tend to slow things down. I mean, I'm tired of maidens lying in gothic beds, zombie-like, while Christopher Lee stares them to death. I agree. Consider this situation. Let us say you and this girl are in love. Professor, you are a vampire. You lost for her blood, but you love her too much. Still, you need blood. You are miles from anyone else. Dawn is approaching. How do you resolve this complication? Well, as Dracula would have done, I'd transform myself into a bat and... Rubbish, it. Professor. Don't tell me you would use such superstitious rot. A 175-pound man transforming himself into a 14-ounce bat. <laughs> the bat is a grotesquely ugly creature of the night. Rat-like body, claws, leathery arms. Horrible. I was merely using the tradition set down by Hollywood, superstition, folklore. Don't believe everything you see in the movies, Professor. The vampire could, could eat his own flesh, drink his own blood. Disgusting. 
Absolutely. I'm... Uh, I'm afraid the uh, morbidity of such a plot development would upset certain audiences. I do try to maintain a PG rating. He almost sounded too real. He does have a way. <laughs> no wonder his fans call him convincing. <laughs> hey, listen to this. In Britain, during the 1820s, the law required that all bodies be given a Christian burial. Sanctimonious, the British. With growing classes of students, the schools were forced to purchase their cadavers illegally. In the case of Dr. Knox, he turned to Burke and Hare. Hey, dig this. In just 10 months, they murdered 16 men and women, selling each corpse to Knox for 8 or 10 pounds. And their own demise? Knox exonerated of all blame, his career destroyed, Burke hung by the neck, his body skinned, his hide tanned, his skeleton put on the exhibit in a university's museum. Hare, a witness for the prosecution, released, vanished, and never heard of again. Oh, boy. In the old days, they really knew how to make pictures. D.W. Griffiths. Barrymore. Lon Chaney. Uh -huh. They were the great. Pictures on the wall. First, it looks like an electric shop. Bubbles all over. That's your next ray machine. What do they want for that? Electric. Atomic energy. That's what I thought it was. Oh! What do we got? Looks like lumber. Oh, no. That's pieces of paper. Oh! Somebody living down here. <laughs> It's pretty crazy. I once believed that Captain Marvel truly existed. Proceed with your belief. Gary, I think those PR men are Burke and Hare, kept alive all these years without a trace of aging. And what ancient alchemy could have achieved such a miracle? Malachi. And what does that make Malachi? Maybe he's exactly what he says he is. A vampire. Do I believe it? Welcome to the Flamingo Hotel in Northern California's beautiful Sonoma County wine country. The hotel was built in 1957 to mirror the image of the original Vegas Flamingo design. It's always been the area's favorite resort because of its amenities and its strong connection to the glamour of Hollywood and Las Vegas. The Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa offers 170 guest rooms. It includes 14 suites and Executive King accommodations. From all of us at the Flamingo Hotel, we thank you and look forward to seeing you soon. You sure you don't want some? It's chamomile. Lisa, you are extremely terrifying. Just the scariest undead subhuman thing on TV, and I really mean that. <laughs> but I am worried that you could give my kids nightmares if they see you, so I'm going to have to block you. <laughs> so that's it. Oh, and, and tell the zombies they're, they're blocked, too. It's poppin' time! Sutherland from Power Rangers, and you're watching North Bay TV. Stay tuned. Go, go, Power Rangers! Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat. 
making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Finish my work, damn you! Damn it, I said get away from that coffin! Hold on, sure. What's the matter with you? Are you crazy? <laughs> fleeting skirmishes. Oh, there he is. Oh, he was trying to pry open Malachi's coffin. With this? You fools. Now you're all in danger. We're in danger. From what? A real vampire? I suppose we should call the police. Police? For a guy who believes in vampires? Okay, on your feet. I guess you're right. County Hospital would be the best place. The only place. A head shrinker would be most apropos. He was the one at the health spa last night. What are you talking about? God, I'll never forget that face. That's the link. He's on the same track. Scotty, that was Barbara's murderer. That man, he wasn't Barbara's murderer. No, but I saw him. He's the killer. He's not a killer, Cindy. You've got to trust me. It's a fantastic story, Cindy. But I need time to prove it. I just wish that I could understand some of this. But all right. I won't go to Driscoll. Thanks, Cindy. Thanks. Can you cover for me tonight? Yeah, you're covered. Good girl. I count on you both to keep an eye on that coffin when I'm resting. Sorry, Malachi. We were out taking pictures. Snapping new candidates for the oh, war. Fools! Have you no skill in your craft? The Avenger was here in the theater all the time. Don't give us the word, Malachi. We'll even skip the formalities. They're trying to kill me. The Avengers put himself in great jeopardy. He's right where we want him. Yes, we will skip the formalities. You 
also believe Malachi is a living vampire. And I'm convinced that Bibi and Harris are Burke and Hare. Thank God. I can't believe it. You are the first person. The first person. I have been working alone for so long. I was beginning to think I would never find anyone who would believe me, who would even listen. Oh, I'm listening. Call me Scotty. Scotty. My name is Tobias Ben Halik. I'm Jewish. I'm a member of the Haganah, the Israeli Avengers. I was part of the original Jewish group assigned to track down fleeing Nazi war criminals. I have been concentrating my efforts for a very long time now on the man known to the world as Malachi. In the beginning, I thought I was pursuing a Nazi, but as the evidence amassed, I realized I was on the trail of something far worse, if that's possible. A vampire. A vampire who had been preying on thousands of human beings for at least the past several hundred years. Evidence? What evidence? I have evidence. Quite convincing evidence. Twenty-five years of evidence. I've got to get you out of here. How? Oh. Start with him. cold, like a heron from the Channel Sea. In the Avenger, free as a bird. It's back to Surgeon Square. Aye, to face the wrath of the devil's own. Did you finish the job? It's gone. The Avenger got out ahead of us. Get the Avenger another time. In the meantime, I believe, Harris, that it's your turn. I'll fix the board. Ah. That won't be necessary. The board's ready. <laughs> when an adult watches a movie monster strangling a movie maiden, he never for a moment believes that he is seeing anything that really happened. But when a child sees the same scene, oh God, when a child sees the same scene, he lacks the experience to tell the difference between reality and the make-believe of the silver screen. Oh, Dr. Unworth, who gave you your degree? Look closely here, and you will see a startling resemblance to Malachi. This would place Malachi in Great Britain at the time of Burke and Hare. Now, look at these other posters. Look at the photos. In each one, the face, and notice all of the different names. Maine, Emelec, Elaine Key. All of the names are anagrams or variations of Malachi.
Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. me hearties i'm crazy boots martin and james the red at the norcal pirates festival and you're watching north bay tv stay tuned <laughs> Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back. You know, John, your movie yeah, here that yeah. we're watching, Nightmare in Blood, the horror host is now dead. A dead horror host. That's not a good topic for me. Oh, I know, I know. Mm -hmm. I hope nobody out there why didn't you follows let... in my footsteps. No, why <laughs> would you kill off a horror host? That being a horror host yourself. Well, uh, we had a limited number of characters, and we wanted to have the vampire uh, oh, continue to... Off. To, to attack to fulfill his desires well it was it was it was quite a wonderful death well done all right but yes. horror host so you've done 276 episodes of creature features and we've done this is 102 Ooh, i'm really impressed i'm glad to be here well it's incredible it's, it's a bit of a centennial for us but i'm just wondering how you pulled it off well, I was even able to take an occasional vacation. What I would do, I would shoot a complete show, and there'd be a little time left at the end, right. and I'd have a script ready, and I'd do the opening segment for another show. Right. Then the next week, we'd come back, do a complete show, then we'd take the same tape, now we'd add on s sequence number two. Oh. And each week, so in four weeks, I could have a complete show ready to go, you would and I could them. take off on a vacation, and they would run that show while I was gone. That is so interesting. Yes. So it took some time to collect a few weeks of vacation. It would take four to five weeks to right. uh, complete a show. But yeah. it, you would always shoot one episode per, per show, except for... I would only have the time at the end. Once a show was complete, right. assuming there was 10 or 15 minutes left, then we would be ready. I'd have the director with the script. Everything would be all set. So we could immediately do that instead of, okay, it's a wrap. Uh-uh, we're going to do right. one more. Right, right. For next well, you know, three. sometimes what we do here is we'll have two guests in one night. Right, we'll, cut we'll, two shows. We'll shoot two shows. And we'll yes. hit all night long. Yes, good way to do it. No, it's not. Because by, by the end segment of the second guest, I look like a zombie. I look like a ghoul. <laughs> well, you have the time here. I was on a schedule. Yeah. I could only stay in the studio for so long. Oh, well, you know, I, I've got things to do, and, you know, they want to clean this room, you know, when, mm. when I'm not around, and, I, you know, I've, I've yes. got things to do around the house, too, so <laughs> who knows. All right, well, what do you think? Should we get back to this film? Absolutely. All right, off we go. Back to Nightmare and Blood. Stay with us. How much longer? Patience. Become a formidable trio this past century. Bond has formed between us that is unique. I wouldn't want your impatience to destroy it.
know what the hell was wrong. Something's closing in. Oh, come on, man, get on with it. I can sense it, feel it. Strong, forceful power. Good. No sign of them backstage. I saw no sign of them in the auditorium. No one has any objections. Oh, I would like that, Mama. You couldn't pay me to touch that thing. The pleasure is all yours, Tobias. I thought vampires could only exist at night. Sunlight should bring about an immediate demise. Precisely. But there is no sunlight. This theater is too well cut off from the outside. No windows for the light to pour through. Of course. It's like perpetual night. This place is starting to get to me. They're in here somewhere. We all have a job to do. Our friend, the Avenger, is close at hand. He's brought some friends with him. I think it's time we laid him to rest once and for all. I think our chances are better if we split up. Are you kidding? If you think I'm going anywhere in this thing, I meant that we should split into teams. I go forth armed. You two may tend to the others. Ben Halik is mine. I look for Malachi alone. Scotty, you and Gary take the basement. There's a maze of corridors and rooms down there. Cindy and I will cover the backstage area. I will check the front part of the building. On with the business of life. In 25 years, you four are the first to believe me. Some members of the Haganah, the police of the world. There is very great danger. I just want you to know, I'm very grateful to you. To all of you. We better get moving. Good luck. friend of his, Harris, is. Yes. No! No! Oh, my God, he's still alive. It's 
possible. I shot him three times. Malachi's formula. It's made Bibi and Harris immortal. They can't be killed. Not with this, anyway. I mean, how are we gonna stop him? He'll be here in a moment. Got to think. How do you kill something immortal? Um, you chop it up into a million pieces. I mean, maybe it's still alive, but at least it can't hurt you. A million pieces. Or a pile of ashes. Cindy. Do you remember the thing? Which thing? The movie thing, RKO, 1951, played by James Arness. You mean Howard Hawks thing? Right. Do you remember how they killed the monster? Uh, they cooked it with electricity. Right. Wait a minute. Come on. The other day when the lights blew out, I saw a cable along this wall. There it is. Uh, look, the thing was a movie. This is real life. How do you know it'll work? I don't. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. Gather your friends together around the campfire and listen 
to scary stories told by Spooky Boo. Horror stories, campfire stories, and scary stories at scarystorytime.com. Slugs went right through him. Behold, he lives yet. Keep this thing until he gets his belt. See if this goes through it. Not our say before, man will turn to ashes. Comics will prevail. Man, we've just had one hell of an experience here. <laughs> you should have been with us upstairs. I hear you. Tobias, has anybody seen him? We haven't. No.
Everything wrapped up? The final traces of the lab are gone. The ashes of all three villains have been disposed of. I made all the arrangements. The funeral for Tobias is set for tomorrow. It will be a day of great solemnity. Just had a look at the auditorium. A great turnout. Getting a little restless, though. The gallery awaits. You really better go. Because we share a common interest. We love to be entertained by horror, whether in novels, film, comics. We don't mind being frightened because we've always believed that creatures of the supernatural to be mere figments of writer's imagination. These creatures of the undead do exist. They walk freely among us, preying on us. We must now band together with a new goal. A goal that goes beyond the confines of this convention. A goal designed to warn others that these supernatural creatures do exist. Our power of belief is our greatest weapon in this coming battle. Malachi and his henchmen have been destroyed. But there are others like him still out there, waiting. Beware the monster. He walks among us. And that wraps up Nightmare in Blood. I, you know, I always love the ending of that film. Mm. You guys did a wonderful... That was so unique. Well, thank you so very much. Good. And you know, Tangella loves it anytime. Something's thank either you. put in or pulled out thank of a you, coffin. So. Yeah. She, you know, she likes your movie. She might not have told you that, but I'm telling you for her. Well, so, thank you. Thank you. Wonderful movie. I, you know, I, I wish you were making more, but I know it's, it's, it's a difficult task that you can't just go out and shoot these things. It takes a lot of planning. Oh, that film like took that. years of my life. But you're doing other stuff, right? Well, yes. I'm uh, th trying to put together a book called The Scariest. The I, Scariest. I discovered I had collected photographs, stills from movies and television that featured a monster of one kind or another, right. uh, an alien monster, a human earth monster, whatever. Right. I had more than uh, like around 250 photographs and I thought they might make a clever book. 
unique with photos. A, with a funny little caption to go with it describing uh, the movie, the title, who, who's in it, and that sort of thing. Oh, that, that would be wonderful. So you would have like color plates in the book. Oh like yeah, that's a wonderful things. idea. I, there might be some color. I'll have to right. double check that. Right. Yeah. yeah, color. Color is always good in a book. You know, when I when I pick up books at this the bookstore, I I look f at the photos to make sure there's some color ones because I, you know, I've got all the cones in my eyes to see color. I, you know, I'm not going to just like leave it all for black and white, right? Right. All right. And of course, you've got <laughs> your books, like. I was a teenage horror host. What was that book? A teenage horror No, what was that uh, book you did? I was a little older than that, Tangela. No, yeah. what was the title of your book? I was a TV horror host. Oh, TV. See, I've mixed up yes. TV with yes. teenage. I was a TV horror host. And you, you were, it's like a manual, right? Uh, I, on I, how I, to do this. I would like to do a sequel to it called The Career That Dripped With Gore. Oh, I love that. So if somebody wants to find out more about you and your books and all that, where do they go? Uh, the, there's a website, uh, creaturesatlarge.com. So that's www.creaturesatlarge.com. Correct. And you go there and you can learn everything you want to know about John and you can order books. And you know, if, if you want this chap to make an appearance, you know, like maybe you could like do the Academy Awards or something, right? You, you would do that, wouldn't you? The Academy Awards? Right, like be the, the MC. <laughs> you should do uh, it. No, you should. You know a thing about films. Well, you can um, tell them how it's done. I don't know what the odds of that happening are. You're <laughs> Not a too smart high. man. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to say goodnight now, John. But however, we're going to have you back as a host to sit in this chair. Very good. And when we do, I'm going to go to Paris and buy some more shoes, and you have to deal with this one. I look forward to that. She's fun. All right, and that's it for us tonight. You guys, thank you for joining us. It's always wonderful to have you with us to watch these films, and uh, hopefully we'll see you next week. It will not be a better film, and it will not be a better guest. So you can skip next week if you like, but if you <laughs> come back, we'd really appreciate it. Huh? We'll see you next time. So, John, this book, that you're dealing, the scariest. You know, if you're gonna have a book about scary, you think you might want to have me inside it someplace, no? Well, I'd put you on the cover, but nobody would buy it. Mm -hmm.